People are always on the move, whether we're heading to work or recreation. To arrive at a new destination requires movement of some form. Human mobility refers to changes of residence encompassing migration, displacement, and planned relocations. Though the Caribbean is known for balmy tropical weather, soft white sands, and lush vegetation, sometimes inhabitants of these precious isles, believe it or not, wish to migrate. Yes, that's right. And they migrate for many different reasons, such as job opportunities, better living conditions, and even love and family. Now, while storms have always played a role in human mobility in the region, in most recent years, people have been forced to move due to more intense and frequent extreme weather events, which have been linked to climate change. The German Development Cooperation GIZ, is implementing the Global Programme Sustainable Management of Human Mobility within the context of climate change. The program was commissioned by the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. It enhances local and international knowledge on how to deal with climate-induced migration, resettlement and displacement in small island states. You see, the Caribbean, for all its natural beauty and diverse way of life, is also located in the hurricane belt, potentially threatened by devastating storms during the hurricane season. As climate scientists have projected, hurricanes are becoming more powerful and possibly more frequent as a result of global warming. When such severe natural disasters impact one or more of the islands, people are forced to leave these desolated spaces and migrate to neighboring countries or further afield. In 2017, Hurricane Irma ferociously struck many of the northern Caribbean islands, building up from a tropical storm to a super hurricane within 24 hours. The inhabitants of the island of Barbuda had to be evacuated to nearby Antigua. And when Dominica was all but decimated later that same year by the now infamous Category 5 Hurricane Maria, many inhabitants had to flee the island due to immense damage wreaked on the infrastructure and natural environment. As an entrepreneur, I, I lost my business. Uh, it was quite traumatic in that regard because I had just finished refurbishing, fixing up and construction and everything else and buying equipment and stuff for my business using my savings. So that was really, really hard. We really have to monitor the children and the children themselves going through a hard time. Seeing that you just had to pick up and leave. There was no preparation in terms of saying goodbye. So there was no closure. Just decided today we're going to go in a matter of hours, we had to pack a suitcase and leave. So we went to St. Lucia first week because we lived there, so we had a network already, as well as the islands were opening their doors to receiving people, people putting up other families that they did not even know. While these catastrophic events, known as rapid onset events of climate change, displace many almost instantly, the more subtle effects of climate change, known as slow onset events, provide their fair share of incentives for some to move. Slow onset events could be changes of seasonal patterns which may interrupt crop production and thus adversely affect livelihoods, or sea level rise which affects populations in the form of flooding in low-lying regions near the sea. The Ansar village is located between two rivers. There's the Ansar Grand Rivier and the Ansar Petit Rivier. From 1994, from Tropical Storm Debbie, we have been having flooding on a regular basis, very frequently. The water used to erode the, the beachfronts to the point where the school was being threatened. We built a, the Gibeon basket, which has helped a lot in stopping the erosion on the beach. We are also experiencing a lot of flooding there because the, the waterway was blocked by fallen trees and debris. We are able to straighten the waterway and create an avenue for water to flow freely and in a, in a straight path. 
This has reduced the flooding in the housing area. The Organization of Eastern Caribbean States Commission, OECS, encompassing many of the English-speaking Caribbean island states and overseas territories and departments, has made some decisive efforts in addressing the free movement of people within the Eastern Caribbean region. As such, the OECS has created policies that are beneficial and applicable to climate-induced mobility. The revised Treaty of Basse-Terre 2011 is one such initiative. This treaty allows OECS residents to freely travel from one OECS island to the next to find employment, access social services, and even to settle. The revised Treaty of Basse-Terre, it speaks to a single, a single space which allows for the free movement of people, goods, and services. And you would have seen over the years that people in the, in the Eastern Caribbean have been able to move more and more freely between countries. You know, with, you know, the, the travel documentation, for example, has been reduced significantly. You can stay in a, a, a member state as long as, as you, you, you want to, so to speak. And um, the, the um, requirements for work that you might find, you know, having to move to a non-OECS territory in the Caribbean, that's not the same you know, in the Eastern Caribbean. It's much, it's much simpler, right? So I think it is fair to say that the, the OECS as a single space and you know, through the revised Treaty of Basse allows for greater mo and more rapid mobility between countries in the event of a climate-induced disaster. These recent events have tested the resilience of the Caribbean people, but have also shown that OECS member states are generally on the right track with developing policies and processes allowing the movement of people within the region. As the impacts of climate change are likely to increase in the future, there is a need to continuously strengthen existing systems to cope with such hazardous events resulting in migration. Climate-induced movements of the Caribbean population are expected to increase and become the norm according to scientific findings. It is therefore imperative that especially in small island developing states such as the Caribbean, more is done to develop further effective legislation and policies to handle climate-induced human mobility, both for the short term and long term. Strong collaboration within the region and committed partnerships with international partners, such as with the GIZ, will help the Caribbean region manage these challenges.